in parentheses, semicolon, and inside, type out the name of the sprite object. In this case, it's sprite one. Now, type, now press Alt F8 to save the file as, and go to uh, your desktop. I've created a folder named example to hold my class, and I've named it example. It has to be the exact same name as the uh, class you've actually, uh, uh, the same class name you've specified in the code. Capital letter and everything, just like the constructor, just like the name of the class, the file has to match it exactly. Go ahead and hit save. I've already saved it, so I'm gonna just replace it for the sake of this tutorial. And then, you need to create a flash file to run this class. So go to File, New, and then create a new flash file, ActionScript 3.0. And then basically, right here in this properties panel, make sure you've got that window loaded. Type in the name of your class. Ours is example, so we're going to name ours example. And then hit uh, Alt F A. Oh, press enter. Go ahead and press enter. Go ahead and skip that error message. It doesn't know, you know, it, there's no class created yet because we haven't saved it in the right folder. Go to the example folder. Ignore that. That is there by mistake. And just name your file example. It doesn't have to match the name, it's just to help remind you of what the actual flash file is for. Hit save. And remember, very important, this has to match word for word, case sensitive, letter for letter, whatever, uh, the, the name of the class that you've created. So now when we test our movie, well, go ahead and save that file. Now when we test our movie, we should see exactly what we expected to see. The same effect you would get in Photoshop if you added a bunch of layers without drawing anything in them has happened right here, except it's only happened on a smaller scale. We've only added one sprite to the stage, that invisible layer. So now let's talk about how to add actual graphics to that shape, how to start drawing out uh, circles and rectangles or do whatever we want to do with that sprite. So now that we've got our sprite set up, how do we start drawing shapes to it? Well, it's really, really simple. Type out Sprite 1 for the Sprite 1 object you've created. Type out uh, graphics, Sprite1.graphics. And then we, before we can start drawing a shape, we have to specify a color. So type out Begin Fill, parentheses, semicolon, and type 0x, ff, and then four zeros. And that'll give us a nice red color. Now, if we were to test the movie right now, nothing really would ha nothing would happen. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Nothing would happen because we haven't drawn anything out yet. We've specified a color for what we hope to draw, but we we still haven't we still haven't drawn any shapes out just yet. So we need to do that. Type out sprite one dot graphics, very similar to the statement above it, and then type draw circle, lowercase d, capital C. Uh, most of the methods in Flash are camel case, parentheses, semicolon, and then the first uh, three options we can specify in this draw circle method are its x value, its y value, and its radius. <clears throat> now if you remember from math class, the radius is half of a circle's diameter. So if we specify 50 for the radius, you can expect the circle to be 100 pixels across. So let's give it an x value of 100, 100 pixels from the left of the stage, give it a y value of 100, 100 pixels down from the top of the stage and uh, we'll say a radius of 50 which it'll give it a diameter of 100 again if we were to test the movie right now we wouldn't really see much because we're forgetting one important step we have to finish what we've started so do sprite one dot graphics dot end fill we have to tell the fill to end very good now when we test the movie we should have a nice little red circle on the stage and we do very good. So now what I want you to do is go ahead and copy and paste all of that code starting at var and ending with the end fill statement. Copy that. Go all the way over, paste it. So now you've got you've got the same object. We're going to change the name of it though to sprite2. We're going to change this to sprite2, this to sprite2, and this to sprite2. And then what we're going to do is set this at 200, set its y value at 200, and change those two f's to zeros and press delete twice and put FF in the middle. That should give us a nice green color. So now remember, we've only added one sprite to the stage. We've specified two sprites, but we've only, we've only actually told Flash to add one. So if we test the movie, we should still only have one sprite. Now, if you wanted to add the second sprite, what you could do is type add child and then do sprite two. So now we should have both of them on the stage, separated and specified by the uh, the different x and y values, and that's pretty much that's pretty much all it is. A uh, sprite is a container. Uh, the shapes that we draw to those sprites um, uh, can be can be manipulated through the uh, the methods they're drawn out with. Uh, for example, we can move around the objects in each sprite, or or what we can do, and this is how Flash differs from Photoshop. Or what we can do is we can tell the sprite we want the sprite to move. 
so the actual layer that the shapes are on. And we do that by specifying sprite.x equal to, oh, excuse me, the name of our object was sprite1, sprite1.x equal to 200. You'll see the uh, red red uh, circle, our initial sprite, our sprite 1, um, has been moved uh, 200 pixels from the left of the stage. The sprite has been moved. The ball is still in the same position relative to the sprite. Remember, we specified the ball as 100 pixels away from the uh, left edge of the stage because initially the sprite's position was at zero. So we could use that as, uh, as a comparison. Now that the... Um, now that the sprite's x value has been manipulated, it's adding on to that. So the, the circle is relative to the sprite, and the sprite is relative to the stage. It can be pretty complicated, but if you take the time to understand it, it'll help you uh, dramatically uh, when constructing these classes and trying to figure out what does what and how everything works. And I know I've used probably a lot of bad examples in this, in this video, but I felt like... Uh, you know, if I was able to clarify it for some people and help some people, then I could save them a lot of the headache I went through in trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section for me, and uh, have a good day.